Hi, it's Lee, and welcome to the Tesla Economist. It would seem that some people think an affordable Tesla Compact is coming as early as 2024 at a price point of $30,000. Some stock analysts even think this is necessary in order for Tesla to continue their substantial growth. In this video, we'll explore the economics of Tesla offering an affordable Tesla along with the supply side and judge what the chances of that occurring might actually be. I mean, we know there's going to be plenty of demand for what people are saying is a $30,000 affordable Tesla. But economics doesn't just focus on demand, there is also supply. Just a lot of businesses most of the time don't struggle so much with supply and it's more a demand issue and want more customers and advertise in order to get more customers. Tesla is not even at the advertising stage yet. They are still just going by word of mouth in a fairly new industry that the average consumer still doesn't actually understand that well. I think in our community, because we understand EVs so well and are in an echo chamber, we don't realize how much less everyone else realizes about Teslas or EVs in general. Even to this day, I still hear some very old FUD come out when I talk about it with some people. But like I said, there are enough people already who do understand enough and are willing to buy a Tesla because their neighbor has shown them theirs. However, Tesla are building more and more factories, and we would hope that eventually at an exponential rate too. But Tesla can't build factories if they can't make cars with all the necessary ingredients, namely batteries. Now, what battery cells would this affordable Tesla be using? 4680 cells cost less to Tesla than CATL's LFP cells, at least when 4680 is in full effect. I often talked about Tesla trying to generate as much profit per kilowatt hour as they can, and a lot of you immediately understood what I meant by this, as it makes for good business. Tesla are limited by battery sales. A battery is a store of energy measured by kilowatt hours. Tesla has a scarce number of kilowatt hours. A Model Y performance sells for $70,000, whereas a Model 3 performance sells for just $63,000. The Model Y may only cost slightly more than the three to build, what with giga castings. So perhaps each Model Y makes $5,000 more profit. As a result, at a rough guess, the Model Y is getting about 17% more gross profit per kilowatt hour. Of course, when that goes through the rest of the financials, it likely comes out closer to 25% improvement in operating margin. Therefore, if Tesla were to build an affordable EV, every kilowatt hour that went into that vehicle would have an opportunity cost of being deployed in a higher value car. And I know what people will say, but the compact version will have a smaller battery. But even if it had a battery as small as 50 kilowatt hours, then would that make a difference? Well, let's say that Tesla have managed to get the cost of this compact Tesla down to $20,000 production cost, and the price is $30,000. Then we're looking at just $200 profit per kilowatt hour not as much as the Model Y, so that is not good business. But wait, Tesla shouldn't care about profits. They have a responsibility to just get as many EVs out there as fast as possible to transition the world to renewable energy. Well, that's one massive project and will cost a fortune. Tesla need a lot of capital for that. On top of that though, there is the natural demand of such a car. What good is it if the waiting list ends up being five years for such a desired vehicle? The thing is, just think how much demand a $30,000 Tesla would have. 5 million a year, 10 million, probably 20. Oh, but that would be 25% of the new car market. That sounds unlikely. Sure, but it won't just be new car buyers wanting one, but used car buyers too. The average used car price in the US was $33,000 for a start. Then you factor in all the cost savings of a Tesla. It becomes a lot cheaper than that. So who knows, perhaps this car would break some sort of rule with supply and demand and even end up at demand as around 50 million a year global. So many people can make enough sacrifices to spend $30,000 on a Tesla when they instantly save thousands of dollars a year on gas, servicing, and maintenance. Oh wait, and a $7,500 tax credit in the US and other local subsidies available in other nations. So it's almost free after all those savings. But if the Model Y has hit saturation and finds the correct market clearing price, where supply meets demand optimally for the highest amount of profit, then Tesla would need to increase demand somehow with a new model. On the assumption that Tesla has not cracked FSD and demand has not gone through the roof again, 
due to people now wanting an AV on top of an EV. Well, we talk and hear so much about the Model Y that the little old Model 3 is often forgotten. Yes, remember how popular that car also was. Now, perhaps when this new North American factory is complete and ramped up and the Texas Model Y is approaching close to 2 million sales just in the US, highly possible thanks to the tax credit and potentially a slight drop in price, but probably not necessary. Of course, the 4680 Model Y is gonna be so amazing, demand will increase for that. I still think that is underrated alone. It's gonna be an exceptional vehicle. Well then, what if this new factory and Texas also have a Model 3 factory using 4680s, structural pack, front and rear castings, and whatever house Tesla have come up with by then, as they are continually improving and reinventing. Ramping up the Model Y supply to meet demand in North America alone is still gonna take until probably 2024, and the Cybertruck on top of that. So Tesla wouldn't even really need to find additional demand until about mid 2024, but this would still have the US Model 3 at around 200,000 sales a year using old manufacturing processes from Fremont. Therefore, Tesla wouldn't even need to focus on Model 3 demand until that time. Then with all these new techniques, they could likely have a Model 3 cost down to perhaps almost $20,000. If it had a price starting at $40,000, then that's 50% gross margin. Of course, the actual price to consumers would only be $32,500. Maybe it's the economy though. If we're in a recession or depression, then people simply can't afford $60,000 on a new Tesla. And $30,000 may be the right price point. But bear in mind, these analysts are saying mid 2024, that's two years from now. For one, we would hope to be out of whatever economic slump we see by then. And secondly, it would take Tesla years to ramp up. So probably couldn't get close to meeting any sort of demand until 2026, by which time we would certainly hope to be out of recession. Therefore, this is not a product necessary for a recession, as it will simply be too late. Elon has said the next vehicle will be the Robotaxi. However, this doesn't mean the Compact might not be the same vehicle potentially. The reason the Robotaxi may indeed take precedence over potential Model 3 expansion is because nothing is more profitable per kilowatt hour than the Robotaxi. On top of that, as it can potentially replace five ICE cars, it has a much larger impact on transitioning the world to renewables. It's always good that from an investment standpoint, that things that have the most effect on the mission are also the most profitable. I don't think Tesla are gonna be pushing out this affordable version until they have the supply and FSD adoption is really high. If Tesla can generate two or $300 a month income from FSD from these vehicles too, then they suddenly become vastly more profitable. That $10,000 profit could be closer to $50,000 per vehicle if we assume FSD subscription over perhaps 20 years. However, we do hear that compacts are a lot more popular in other markets like Europe and Asia, and perhaps China is supplying enough LFP sales for Tesla to actually make enough of this compact version Tesla for these markets. It would not enter the US though, and it would not be as an opportunity cost for any of the other vehicles. It would require a massive expansion in Shanghai and Berlin, as there would still be demand for five or 10 million of these a year. Perhaps in a couple of years, China really could make that many sales this is possible. Remember though, if Tesla are purchasing sales from China, then it is less profitable than their own in-house sales. These sales could equally be used in a Model 3 rear-wheel drive or Model Y rear-wheel drive, and Tesla could reduce the prices of these models to create more demand. However, I think that even if Tesla did launch a compact in this market, it may start a price point more like $35,000 as they expand supply. But even so, Tesla would still need massive factories to cater to that much demand. So to all those analysts out there pushing for Elon to launch an affordable compact for consumers, then it doesn't make sense. The only scenario I see it occurring is in the Eurasian markets. They don't have the same subsidies as the US. There may be an abundance of LFP sales that Tesla don't want to use in the US, especially if it means they're not eligible for tax credits. So it's a possibility for markets outside of the US, but I don't think it will be quite affordable as people expect, at least not to start with. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon.